In this video, we're going to look at a legal problem called Unique Paths. So we're basically given a robot that located at the top left corner of a M times N grid. So we want to figure out how many unique paths that the robot can travel down to the pot bottom right corner of the grid. So you can see here we have an example where we have a 3 times 7 grid, right? So robot starts at the top left and we want to know how many unique ways that the robot can travel to the bottom right. In this case we have 28 ways, right? We can we can either uh, for each and every single cell, right? We can either go to the right or we can go down, right? So we can either move down or we can move right at any point in time. So let's say we have an example, right? Where we have maybe two by two. So how many possible ways that we can travel to the bottom right? In this case, we're starting here, and in this case, we can go here, right? We can also go here. And we know that for each and every single cell, we can either go to the right or we can go down. We cannot go top or left. So in this case, we have to know the total unique ways if we go to the right, right? If we traverse, the, if we traverse on the right side, and we want to know the total unique ways that we have to traverse the, to the left, uh, uh, going down to reach to the bottom right, right? So what we're going to do is, you can see here, let's say we have a 2x2. Two two. What's going to happen is the parent stack will ask its uh, children stack, right? In this case, the, the parent stack will go to the right and try to find the total unique ways for, its to go, for uh, this robot to go to the right to reach the bottom right, right? And then... What we're going to do is that the robot will also go down. We'll, we'll try to find the total unique ways to go down, to find the total unique ways to go to the bottom right. So in this case, this when we get to here, when the robot gets to here, then the robot will go to the right and also go down to find the total unique ways for this position to reach the bottom right. So if I go down, in this case, there's one way because if I go down, I reach the bottom right. So what's going to happen is we're going to return back to the parent stack, say there is one way to reach the bottom right. And then if we're here, like at, out of bound, then pretty much there's no way for us to reach the bottom right. So we're just going to tell the parent, say there's zero way to reach the bottom, bottom right. So what's going to happen is that for this parent, for this stack right here, right, for this position, we take a total uh, unique ways to reach to the bottom right, which is only one. So in this case, for the current position to reach the bottom uh, bottom right is just going to be one. And then what's going to happen is it's going to return back to its parent stack or the parent cell to tell the parent cell or tell the parent stack that the total unique ways for if we go down to this path or for this current position is going to be one, right? So there's only one way to go to the bottom right. So we're going to tell parent stack that. And then parent stack will also go to down, right? In this case, if we go down, then in this case, we will also get one because here you can see if I'm at this position, the total unique ways to go to the bottom right. In this case, it's just one, right? If I go down, that's out of bounds, so there's zero. So what's gonna happen is if we go to the right, there's one path. So we're gonna return back to its parent stack. Say so if for this position, the total unique path to reach the bottom right is just gonna be one. So now the parent stack knows the total unique ways for going to the right and total unique path to go down. Then we're just gonna get a sum out of those two decision to those path, and we'll we will get the uh, total unique ways or total unique path to go to the bottom right for the current coordinate, right? For the current position. So to do this in code, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a global variable m and a global variable n. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna set m is equal to m, this dot n is equal to n. We're gonna use a recursion uh, function to solve this problem. We're gonna say return helper, we're gonna start, we want to know the total unique ways for the first cell in our grid, right? And at the end, we want to return the total unique ways for this coordinate. And all this function is trying to do is trying to return how many unique ways for the current row and the current column, okay? 
So what we're going to do is first we're going to check to see if uh, the base case, right? If we satisfy the base case. And the base case is that if row is out of bound, right? If row is bigger than um, or equal to M, or if column is bigger than or equal to N. The reason why we check those two, because we the robot can only go right or down. So we don't have to check to see if we're if the row is less than zero or or the column is less than zero because we're not going to go to the left or the top. So if that's the case, if we're out of bound, we can just return zero, right? Because there's no way that we can reach the bottom or the bottom right if we're out of bound, right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the total unique path. So if we go down, the total unique path in this case is going to be row plus one. So it's going to be the next row and the same column. So what's going to happen is we, if we're also going to calculate total unique ways if we go to the right. So it's going to be row at column plus one. So this will calculate uh, the total unique ways for this coordinate right here, right? And at the end, we're just going to return the total unique ways for both if uh, for both uh, going down, right? The path that we go down to reach the bottom right, plus the path that we go to the right to reach the bottom right. Okay. And if we were to run this in code, uh, we'll get fail because one thing that I forgot to do is in this case, if we're reached to the bottom end, right? If row is equal to m minus one and the column is equal to n minus one, right? The, the last cell, we're gonna return one because we found a path, right? So now if we were to run our code, you can see we have our succeed, right? We, we basically works, but the thing is this will give us a time complexity of exponential. So what we can do is we can use a cache, right? We can use a 2D integer array, okay? Which cache the result. If we visit this place before, right? If we visit this cell before, uh, we can be able to um, like return the pre-computed result, right? Because you can see here for this position, right? You can see we're going to the right, we're going down. And in this case, for this cell right here, I also had to go to the right and go down. So you can see, but here for this cell, I also had to go down and go to the right to calculate a total unique path. So you can see that this is being called two times or twice. So what we can do is we can use cache, right? To basically cache this and this will improve the time complexity down to a uh, m times n. So let's try to do that. So if this position uh, is not null, right? If it does not equal null, then we can return the pre-computed value, right? And then what we're gonna do is that for this position, once we calculate it, we can just save that in our cache. Okay, and then we can just return the, the, the result to the parent stack. So now if we were to run our code, you can see we have our six C. Nope, it didn't work. Okay, the reason why it didn't work. So the reason why it didn't work because I didn't define it. So in this case, cache is gonna equal to integer at M at N. Okay, so now if we were to run our code and now let's try to submit and you can see we have our success. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can do this using a bottom up. So to do this using a bottom up approach, basically we know that if we're at the bottom, if we're at the bottom right, in this case, the bottom right finish line, then in this case, there is only one way, right? In this case, there's only one path to reach the bottom. And if we're here, right, what's the, what's the total unique path to reach the bottom right? In this case, only one, because we can only go to going, going down to reach the bottom right. And if we're here, total unique way to go to the bottom right is just gonna be one to the right, right? So there's only one path. So for those two elements, we know that there's only one path to reach the bottom right. But what about here? Well, in this case, we know that the total unique path for here is one and total unique path to reach the bottom is here is one. So in this case, to figure out total unique path for this position is gonna be the bottom right plus the bottom, uh, sorry, the bottom uh, position, the total unique path for the bottom, uh, cell to reach the right, uh, to reach the bottom right, plus the total unique ways for the right cell to reach the bottom right. In this case, one plus one will give us two. So here is gonna be two. Okay, so what about here? 
In this case, we had to figure out this one. So in this case, there's just gonna be one because for the bottom row, you can only go right and here you can only go down. So these ones, you can set it as one. So here, you can see here, um, if I go to the right, there are two unique ways to reach the bottom right. If I go down, the total unique ways to reach the, to the, the, the bottom right is just gonna be one. So it's gonna be the total for those two paths, right? For those two uh, unique way cells. So it's gonna be one plus two will give us three. So there will be a total of three, right? Three unique path to reach the bottom right. So you, so you can do this way, right? You can do this way, you can do this way, and, and so on and so forth, right? So what we can do is we can set those borders elements to all be one, right? These borders all to be one. We're gonna start at the at here and then working our way up, right? So but let's take a look at some edge cases here. So if we only have just like, maybe let's say we only have here, like one by two, right? So in this case, same thing, the bottom row will be just one. So here's one, here's one. If I have something like this, same thing, it's gonna be one, one here. But if I have something like this, right? It's just only one cell, then it's just gonna be one, right? So those are the base case is that basically we wanna fill each and every single the 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 bottom row as well as the the last the the last row and the last column to be one, and then we're gonna and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at this position right if there is a position that we can start. So in this case, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the using a bottom up approach. So to start first, I'm going to create the uh, the cache array, and then basically we're gonna say integer two D gonna call it cache with the size of m and there's gonna be n number of columns. So for each and every single row that we have, right? So for each and every single row in cache, we're going to set each and every single row, so arrays.fill. So we're gonna fill them with once, okay? Initially, we're gonna fill them with once. And then once we fill them with once, right? Now we have the bottom row and then Every, pretty much every single cell to be one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the, um, the, the bottom, right? The very, uh, the, the second, uh, the last second row and the last second column. So we're gonna say for integer, uh, the current row is equal to uh, m minus two, right? m minus two will be the last, the second last row. Uh, Let's make it index. So i is equal to row minus two. And then while i is bigger than or equal to zero, i minus minus, right? And then let's have a j pointer. So in this, in this case, integer j is equal to column, or sorry, not column, this is m, sorry. So this should be m. And then j is gonna be n minus two. And then while j is bigger than or equal to zero, right? J minus minus, okay? And then we're gonna start at the second row and second column. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're going to calculate each and every single position, right? And then at the end, we're just gonna return cache at zero at zero, right? And this will give us the result. Because we're starting in here and then we're gonna calculate this, the total unique weight for this cell, basically the answer is gonna be the total unique ways for the bottom cell and total unique ways for the, the right cell to reach the bottom right. So we're gonna have a bottom, bottom is equal to cache, right, at i plus one at j, okay? And then the right is equal to cache at i at j plus one, right? And then what we're gonna do is that for the current position, so cache at i at j, is actually equal to the sum or the total of all unique path for if I go right or if I go, and if I go to the bottom, right? So bottom plus the right. So this will give us the total unique way for this current position. And we're just going to do it one by one and for each and every single position until we reach the first cell in the array, right? For this first cell in the grid. So if we were to run this, you can see we have our uh, accepted. And now if I submit the code, you can see we have our success. 
So the time complexity here is going to be m times n, and the space complexity is also going to be m times n because of the 2D cache array. Uh, 